Hi guys, today we're going to be making an auto clicker out of a Raspberry Pi Pico. And I'm going to do this because I'm using vanilla Raspberry, I'm using vanilla Minecraft. And one of the most annoying things um, for this is harvesting these mobs, which just takes forever and I've got better things to do with my life. So I've put together a program using my Raspberry Pi Pico, which will basically perform this action. So if I click on the run on my script and then go into my game, you'll see that after 10 seconds, it will start attacking the mobs automatically. Anytime about now. There we go. So now it's just swinging left and right and killing the mobs for me automatically. So I'm just going to pause this program and I'll allow the mobs to collect in the background while I'll show you how to make it. So uh, we're going to start off with a quick introduction. And then we're back. Uh, so we're going to start off with Thonny. So you can download Thonny. It's a micro Python editor. Now, as I say, this is using a Raspberry Pi Pico 2040 um, microcontroller. It just connects via a cable to my PC and I can program it directly. So what I'm going to do now is open up my Thonny and bring that into view for you. You'll now see that Thonny is appearing here. And in order to get Thonny working, we first need to upload the firmware to our machine. So we're going to go up, to, we're going to open up Google and we're going to find something called Circuit Python. So if we just uh, open up here and we type in Circuit Python, this will give us all the libraries we need to access a HID device, human interface device. So we're going to click on Downloads, uh, we're going to click on Pico, and we're going to download the latest UF2 file. And once we have that, we're going to take our Raspberry Pi Pico, unplug it. There is a small button here, which I'm going to hold down, and as I plug it in, it will be viewed as a new flash drive. As you can see, it's now appearing there. And what I then have to do is drag my UF2 file into my folder. Which Windows 11 is not allowing me to do. So let's try that again. We'll split screen this. And we'll bring my Windows folder up. There we go. Now we'll try dragging over again. The file will basically copy it, then reboot. I really hate this widget in the corner. It always gets in my way. So now that that's finally copying over, because Windows 11 has stopped getting in my way, it will then finish copying, and then the device will reboot and be seen as a new device. So the first thing we need to do in Thonny is click on this, not now, uh, is click on this lower hand corner and click on circuit pi. Mine is on COM9. That is now accessing the board itself. I'm going to type in print hello world and enter just to see if it's working or not. And as you can see, we got a response. This was processed on the board itself. We're then going to click on tools. We're going to click on manage packages and we're going to type in Adafruit. HID. We'll then click on search on PyPy. And this is the one we want Adafruit Circuit Python HID. So I'm going to click on this and then I'm going to click on install. This will then download and copy all the files over to the drive as required. I'll give it a few moments to complete this action. It does sometimes come up with this error. I don't know why it does that. It seems to work fine regardless. So I'm just going to close that down. To make sure these files are present, I'm going to go into my CircuitPy drive. And I'm going to double click on lib. And we should have adafruit underscore hid. And we got our Python files in there. So that's come down just fine. 
So the next thing I want to do is create a new file, so a new, and then I'm going to save this to my CircuitPython device, and we're going to call it autominecraft.py. Then I'm going to click on OK, and we're going to start typing in our program. So I'll bring up my notes on the other screen, and we're going to start by importing time. Time is a library that basically allows us to set delays in this program. It can be used for other features like grabbing date and time from the system as well, but for the purposes of this program, it's just a library that helps delay everything. Thank you for your roses, I appreciate that. Um, now we're going to import a USB HID device. This is a library that allows us to use the USB HID protocol. HID stands for Human Interface Device. This includes mice, keyboards, gamepads, etc. Then we're going to bring in the Adafruit. So we're going to type in from Adafruit and HID.mouse. So this brings in the specific Adafruit HID object, which is going to be the mouse in this case. And then we're going to type in import as an object called mouse. And then we're going to import board, which is a general library that allows us to use certain boards features. And we're going to import digital IO which allows us to access the digital interface of the board. This is so you can use things like LEDs, GPIOs, and other things in futures. I probably won't use these features right now, but I'm kind of future-proofing this program um, for uh, use of LEDs and buttons to turn it off and on in the future. But at the moment, we're just working on the basic version. So I'm going to type in mouse equals mouse, and I'm going to grab the uh, USB hid.devices. Uh, this line will give us access to the mouse's features and it will set it up as an object mouse to call upon those features. So we'll have mouse move, mouse click, etc. Those sort of features available. Then we're going to type in time.sleep and I'm going to give myself 10 seconds to run the program, go into Minecraft and get it starting. So uh, once I've done that, I will then start a new infinite loop. So true. This will just loop the program indefinitely, and I'm going to create another loop of 10 steps. So 4x in range, and I want a range of 0 to 10. You can step it by adding another parameter there, but I just want it to go from 0 to 10 nice and orderly. We're putting a colon there, and then we're going to type in mouse. Remember, spacing in Python is very important, so you've got to get that right. So mouse dot move and we're just going to move it 20 pixels so there we can see that we are grabbing the mouse object and we are giving it a command or a method if you like and we're giving it a value of x equals 20 you can also do y for up and down but we just want a sweeping left and right next i'm going to type in mouse click because after we performed a movement action we want to attack the mobs with a mouse click so i'm going to click going to type in mouse dot click sorry and then mouse which you'll notice this is capital so that's this object here is um, then going to be dot left button and this all needs to be capitals so mouse dot click mouse dot left button you can tell from the command what it does it needs to be typed in this way otherwise it won't work and then we're going to sleep the program for 0 0.2 seconds so sleep and a 0 0.2. And that's the first range of attacks. This will now go in a, uh, I believe it's the, my mind has just gone temporarily back. It's right, yes. So we, we're moving in the right direction. And now, of course, we need to move it back to our starting point. Otherwise, we're just going to be spinning in circles forever. And there's no point in that. So we're going to then take this exact same logic block here and we're just going to paste it below and instead of going right we want to go left so we simply put a negative value in there and now we've just created the movement back to where we were 
Now, finally, I want to sleep for 10 seconds between these actions. This means that I can come in, stop the program. I've got 10 seconds to interact with my computer in some way. So I'm going to type in time, sleep, and 10. And then I'm going to save my program. And I'm going to minimize this and get ready to see if it works in Minecraft. So I'm just going to click the play button see if there's any errors, we look good, resume game, position myself. As you can see, I've got a big crowd of mobs farmed automatically by my mob farmer, and in 10 seconds now, it's going to start murdering them all, so I get that delicious XP. And now, despite my being on a vanilla Minecraft server with no mods, I can basically leave this running for a few hours, farming XP for me, while I do more interesting things with my life. Um, and this way I can remove all that annoying grindingness that I have to go through where I inevitably die in a cave or get hit by a mate or fall off something, losing the majority of my points and then feel like never playing Minecraft again. This allows me to skip all that unnecessary stuff and actually um, get to the part of Minecraft I enjoy doing, which is crafting. Yes, I could play in, in creative mode, but I prefer these sort of clever solutions because now I'm playing Minecraft using a Raspberry Pi Pi Pico. So, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you subscribe and like to my channel and continue following. If you have any great ideas for projects, please let me know and um, have a great new year. Stop that now.